Hi guys, how you going? Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel. Now normally I would say I hope you're having an amazing day, but I actually went and spoke, uh, met up with someone on the weekend, Malcolm Canning, and <laughs> he let me know that a maze is something that you get stuck in and you run around banging your head into walls. So I don't want to wish you that. So today I'm going to wish you a fabulous day. And I'm going to have to rethink. <laughs> Malcolm, you've stuffed up my intro. Um, so if you've got any uh, suggestions of what kind of day I should wish you, leave them in the comments. All right, so here we go. Today I wanted to have a look at Melbourne. And this picture in front of us is actually a picture of Melbourne. And as you can see, we've just got this massive, huge Tartarian Cathedral, massive dome here, definitely old world architecture, another big building here, we've got spires, towers, and all this stuff in Melbourne. Now, I used to live in Melbourne, um, I guess, I'm not sure what bridge this is, the Yarra, across the Yarra. Uh, but I don't remember it looking like this. Uh, I'll show the site I got this from. All it says about this picture is the Melbourne skyline. So I don't really have a date with it. So yeah, I wanted to have a look at Melbourne today and specifically Collins Street in Melbourne. So let's jump into this. So to start with, I just wanted to get a bit of background on Melbourne, because uh, as we know, Australia is a fairly new country. Um, the story goes, discovered, we know it was discovered by the Dutch before Cook, but they say Cook, 1788, landed, or oh, the first fleet, 1788. Uh, and it was as a convict colony, and then, you know, the first sort of uh, colonies happened pretty quickly. And then over the next 50 years, we suddenly had all these uh, cities, you know, Melbourne, Sydney, a few other ones around, big, big, uh, a lot of big country towns as well with big buildings in them. And this all happened in a very short time uh, where there was no industry really in the country. There was no skilled labor and there was really no necessity, no need for the buildings they built. Okay, so Melbourne, city of Melbourne. And this starts off, the City of Melbourne respect, respectfully acknowledge that it is located on the traditional land of the Cullen Nation. This special place is now known by its European name of Melbourne. And I, found, I find that paragraph very disrespectful. It's just like, yeah, we came, we stole, we took all your stuff. And we just, you know, yeah, we acknowledge you were here, but we're not changing the name. We're just, we, we're just taking it, bugger off. Today, Melbourne is one of the great multicultural cities of the world and is a significant meeting place for the Wurundjeri, Boonarong and Torgarong, Jijarong, sorry guys, and Wetharong, which make up the Cullen Nation. Melbourne has always been an important meeting place and location for events of social, education, sporting and cultural significance. Melbourne is the capital of Victoria, the home of close to 4 million people. Melbourne was founded on the Yarra River in 1835. After an abortive bid in 1803 to establish a settlement inside the Port Phillip Bay heads near Sorrento. So there you go, it was established in 1835, Australia, and literally we're talking the first ship, you know, the first ships rocked up here, we're told, 1788, so all they... We're told all that was here was, was well, there was nothing here, but all that was here was what they brought with them. So uh, there was a few fleets, obviously, and then they, you know, they when more people came over, they started to colonise. They brought convicts in until the 1850s. Uh, but who built all these cities and towns and everything? And that's what we're going to have a look at. So. 35 years, so I mean, what would be, you know, it's less than 50 years after the first boat landed. They've started Melbourne, 
um, and it goes down here, like most Australian colonies, the original reason for the British occupation of Victoria was the fear of possible French settlement. So they were trying to get it before the French got it, they're saying. By the end of the 18th century, the coast had been explored extensively by both British and French adventurers. Reacting to a perceived threat, uh, to a perceived French threat, Lieutenant David Collins, accompanied by a party comprising both convicts and free settlers, landed on the shores of Port Phillip Bay near Sorrento in October 1803, and a short-lived colony was established. So that was like 20, you know, 15 years after they landed. You know, instead of establishing the colony that they've got and trying to get a good, you know, they're running around setting up colonies everywhere apparently. And then obviously Van Diemen's Land is Tasmania. So that's, you know, the story basically. So it's, I mean, it, even, it doesn't even say that, that it was set up for any reason, Melbourne. It's just, oh, just so the French don't get it. Um, I mean, where do all the people come from that, that they were setting up all these cities with to, to, to beat the French? Anyway, this is uh, Collins Street in Melbourne. Now, Collins Street is one of the streets in the city. As you can see, this is a picture. <laughs> what do you reckon? So these, you know, these, these buildings could literally be anywhere in the world. Look at this one. Oh, whoops, how do we do that? Oh. Look at this one at the end. Oh, it's, see, these, these look like... Uh, uh, cathedral windows they've got like a shape and that's a common shape that sort of five hole sh uh, circle sh shape thing you see that a lot I mean look at this we've got just got the spires and the towers on it on this one too you know the arch windows just you know the amazing architecture and this is what they were building guys these are the first kind of build these are the oldest buildings in Melbourne this is what they were building back in the 1840s and 50s apparently I mean, look at this stuff. Where, where did all the bricks come from? Where did the cement come from? Where did the render come from? Where did the paint come from? Where did the glass come from? Where did the steel come from? Where did the skilled labor come from? And where did the need come from? I mean, it's just it's a, bit, a bit excessive, isn't it? <laughs> um, so Collins Street is a major street in the center of Melbourne, Victoria. In Australia, it was in Australia. It was laid out for it. <laughs> It was laid out in the first survey of Melbourne, the original 1837 Hoddy Grid, and soon became the most desirable address in the city. Collins Street was named after Lieutenant Governor of Tasmania, David Collins, who led a group of settlers in establishing a short-lived settlement at Sorrento. The eastern end of Collins Street has been known colloquially as the Paris End since the 1950s due to its numerous heritage buildings. Old street trees, high-end shopping boutiques, and as a location for the first sidewalk cafes in the city. Blocks further west, centre around Queen Street, etc. As laid out by the surveyors, it was exactly one mile in length and one and a half chains, or 30 metres wide. The street was named for the Lieutenant Governor, Collins, and blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's really all they're saying. The first major street improvements were carried out in the 1850s including bluestone curbs, gutters, and introduction of gas lighting in 1855. The first street trees were elms planted in 1875. A cable tram line was laid in 1886 and was operational <laughs> for less than 50 years, of course, until 1930 when it was electrified. What? Oh, okay, so they changed it from a cable tram, okay, in the 30s. And then it just goes on. But what I really want to show you is just this Collins Street. Now, this is um, a drawing. This is supposed to be Collins Street basically uh, back in the day. I'm not sure what the date on that. Do they have a date? I think that wasn't pretty much at settlement. Yeah, 1839. So, 18, now, this is four years after settlement. And remember, there was no reason to settle there. It was just so that... To, so the French couldn't. And look how built out it is. It's got two-story buildings here, here. And that's just in a couple of years. And down here we have a few more pictures. And as it's just it's it's just covered this place. Now here's a nice Tartarian building here. 
This is the facade of the Collins Street Bank of New South Wales. It was relocated to become the University of Melbourne Commerce Building. There you go. And some old buildings, but let's have a look. This is where I got this picture of Melbourne skyline. And as you see, it just says Melbourne skyline. We're on victorianplaces.com. That was a postcard apparently now. Got some old pictures of Melbourne down here. Um, these are all around Collins Street. This, look at these two big towers here. Look at this building. This sort of tower just sort of pops off the side and just goes up with this massive antenna on it. Got tram, so I'm not sure uh, what date here is. But yeah, interesting pick that one. And this just shows us a lot of, you know, how Melbourne is actually just full of stuff like this. This is Burke Street. Back in the, what, 50s probably. And again, you can just see the, the unnecessary size of this building. This is the people here. And that's the doorway. Now, it looks like there's steps going up. But even if you get this person up here, they're like in here somewhere. This is a huge doorway. And so these are huge levels. And so what they've done, they've built a building that could have been five levels and it's only three. Now, why would you do that in, in a city that's, that's new and you're just trying to get established? St. Paul's Cathedral. And look, this has still got all these, you know, whatever they are, the little bits that stick out of the terracotta masonry bits that look very antiquity. They've got bits on the top here. And they've got the, look at this tower. And again, look at the huge size of it. And of course, it is steps up to it. And just people looking tiny next to this massive building. And this here, see this shape here? This is what I was pointing out before. We see a lot of these types of things with the circles in them, the shapes. I was on that building. But yeah, so a lot of very old Tartarian looking stuff in Melbourne. Now this is 1835. So this is supposed to be, um, this is John Batman. He's one of the founders of Melbourne, meeting the local Aboriginals apparently. So here in this picture, they're saying there was nothing at all in Melbourne in 1835, as you can see, nothing there. This is four years later, and you can see streets, houses everywhere, all completed, all up and down, no industry, you know, where did all the wood, all the bricks, everything come from? I mean, obviously wood, you can cut down trees, but you then need to mill it, you need saws, you need nails, you know, screws, all these things, levels, you know. <laughs> So this is in four years, what they've done. Okay, so here are some pictures. This I've just put in Collins Street, 1850. Okay, so you saw what it looked like in 1835. This is 1902, this photo. Um, and look at that. Look at that building. Look at this. It, and that's... That's not even ground, that's sitting on top of another building. Massive dome here, big towers, archways, and of course, look at the size of the people compared to these doorways. These are, we're, we're told these are the first buildings that were built in Melbourne. Brand new colony, no industry, no skilled labour, convicts, and they're just going out, you know, settling and, and just, you know, founding, as they call it, you know, finding cities and telling us that, that they just built architecture like this. I mean, this is a story we're given. Quite ridiculous. Now this is again, this is Collins Street. Uh, don't have a, I think this one might have a date on it. Um, Collins Street. No. But as you can see, it's pre-car. It's 18, what, 1880s or something? Again, look, just you know, buildings that should not be there. They're just Tartarian. 
Is that a flag? And does that look American? I don't know. Uh, the street lights, we see these street lights all over the world, all the same design. And again, you know, it's pretty tall. Um, yeah, you know, this is completely built out. And this is, you know, I'd say this is 1880s circa. So it's only, you know, 50 years after they literally turned up in a boat with a few people and a few convicts. 50 years they've got this. And this is, again, this is what it looks like. It's just everywhere. The whole place is completely built out. Look at this whole block. We've got towers. The whole block going both ways. More towers down there. We've got columns here. You know, it's the classic old world architecture. And, it, of course, it's giant sized. Again, look at this street. And this is just one street in, in Melbourne City. Again, this is, there's no cars yet. Got the cable tram, we've got the horse and carts, and they've been building this stuff. Collins Street, circa 1900. Don't even have pay, like sealed roads. And again, look at these two massive domes. Look at this, the front of this building. Why would, you know, why would you be doing this, putting all this time and effort? into building stuff that when you, that's not what you need. And they've got trees, what they would be building one story buildings with out of wood. You know, that, that would be really all they would have the resources to, to do. But no, we get these big <laughs> red brick and stone buildings. And look at this one down here. And of course, you know, this street light and there they say it everywhere. And then I don't know, it's sort of got one massive building here and here and then the rest is sort of, I don't know, a bit missing. So this is Spencer Street, this isn't Collins Street, this one, but again, no sealed roads. Just, you know, it just doesn't really make a lot of sense. Another one, you can just see this huge, huge building. I'm not sure that that's Collins Street, we better go back. So, yeah. This is all Collins Street. Big buildings everywhere. Look at this. I mean, is that not ridiculous? Look at the size of the people. As you can see, you know, that, that's being flooded out. This bottom story and just the whole way up. <laughs> Look at this building. This skinny one in there in the middle, and just the whole way down. And look, and look at this antiquitech just popping up everywhere. You know, this amazing architecture, and then they go and paint this sign on the wall. But yeah, this is Melbourne, Australia, Collins Street. And look at it, it's just the whole thing completely built out in Tartarian old world architecture. This is Swanson Street, sorry, but you can see it's the same stuff. Now this is number 333 Collins Street. Interesting number. Look at this building next to it though. Look at the facade on that. But this one, um, now someone told me about, I think it was Malcolm uh, Canning, I'm not sure, <laughs> I think it was, um, and I do try and get to all your stuff guys, I really do appreciate all the, you know, the, the tips and hints you leave me and all the photos and everything, and um, I try and get to them all, but I, I don't always remember who sent me what, because I do get a lot of stuff coming in, so whoever did send me this, uh, 333 Collins, thank you, and uh, what it was is... Check out the dome inside this place. Look at this. And this is one of the early buildings in Melbourne. This is what they were building. This is what we're told. They were building this kind of stuff. 
you know, within 50 years of founding the city, they're throwing this up. Now, I've done other videos that look at the industry, you know, like the brick making industry and cement making and glass making, things like that, to see if it was even possible for them to do this. And as far as I can see, it wasn't. There was no, there was just not enough industry around to be creating everything they needed for this. And there wasn't the population because to create that industry and to run it and then to have all the people building it, all the people moving it, you know, shipping all the products and everything, selling it, the whole lot, that, that's a, a lot of people. When you're talking buildings like this, if you're talking a wooden shack, well, you don't really need any industry, but this, I mean, come on. And, you know, of course, we, we can't build this stuff today. But, you know, a, a bunch of unskilled artisans and convicts could, apparently. And look at the size. See this guy walking through here? Look at the size of this building. Like, seriously. This, this roof in here is like, what, one, two, three, four, it's like six, seven stories high. So this is, uh, the yeah, Dome at 333 Collins Street. There it is. And this dome's in the middle of the building by the looks of it, and then everything sort of comes off it, but, I mean, is, what, what? I mean, how would you... <sighs> How would people in Australia, in Melbourne, in the 1850s, even conceive of buildings like this? I mean, just look at it. And like I said before, you could pick this up and put it in any European city and it would look, you know, no one would know that it shouldn't be there. But I mean, because it should be there, because look at it. It's the same architecture all over the world. All right, now these are some pictures that were sent to me by Jared, Jared Krolkslein, um, through Facebook. So thank you very much, Jared. <clears throat> so these were sent to me, these pictures uh, by Jared Krolkslein uh, via Facebook. So thank you, Jared. And these are all Collins Street in Melbourne. And as you can see, this building again, look at the doorways on this thing. And just look at the architecture. Big star up in the window here. Okay, and in this photo, this is what we get at the side of the buildings. And as you can see, this one here is well, at least two stories down. A story here, another story here, and steps going up. So I'm not sure where this photo is taken from. Well, the vantage point is, but clearly you can see this is the level of the road up here. And this is a wall, and this is all underground. Or well, not underground, but it's under the road level. Why is the question. And this is the mud flood that we talk about. You know, all these buildings that, you know, you do not build buildings under the ground level. Now, this, they, they're telling us, was built... Um, you know, all these buildings would have been late 1800s, 1850s to 1880s. So, you know, less than 150 years ago. And what did they, do they think that the ground level just rose naturally this high? That's just it's, it's silly. This building here, you can see the front of it. And you can see these windows going straight into the ground. And as you can see, this one here is smaller than this one here. Now look at the size of this building. How much do you reckon that would weigh? Huge solid brick or stone building with all the finishings. I mean, that would weigh a lot, thousands of tons. Now that would, a building like that needs to be built on a flat foundation. Why would you be building this on a, on, a, on a slant, you know, this is clearly higher here than it is here. And they've even had to put steps up to get into it because the lower level is buried. This is another old world building. Look at this, looks like a cathedral door, this one. Look at that. 
I've seen a couple of these before. There's there's a picture of one like this in one of uh, the world's fairs. I think it might be the Chicago one. It's got a huge door that's sort of like this laid in, in as it goes in. But again, old world building. You know, look at all this. You know, the facade and the art artistry that's gone into it. All you know, the same things we see everywhere. The curved, you know, windows, the intricate stuff, the triangles, porticos. And the window's going into the ground. And you can't see because of the van here, but there would be steps going up to that front level. And we see this a lot as well. See this doorway, they've they've halved it, they've put like a a thing across here and filled it in to make it look smaller. So this is the thing. When did these you know, when were these buildings built? Here's another view. Clearly you can see the level of the ground and this just goes straight down. So this is obviously, um, I'm not sure the back of the building, they've cleared it out but the front's just still buried. Uh, this is obviously a shot looking up at the roof that we could see in the last picture, this bit here. And look at that. I have no idea what that is. Some big thing going up here. No idea, but you know, look at these cathedral windows everywhere. Again, see this doorway, see how they fill them in? To make them look smaller. Yeah, I don't know what that this is, look at that. Another shot. Show. I mean, that's that's two stories. Oh, you know, red brick, old red brick. You know, we've got the brick lintels in the archways that they do, and you see very thick walls. Old world buildings. Now, again, why would they be building this in as the first buildings in a new city in a in a new country? It wasn't even a country; it was just a, a territory of England. And they didn't have the industry, they didn't have the bricks, they didn't have the labour, they didn't have the skilled labour, and they're building stuff like this and building them two storeys underground. There's another shot. These are all from Kerrod. He's gone into Melbourne and taken some shots for us. Now, just trying to see what's going on here. Looks like there's a window there. I'm not sure, but... And steps going up. So you can clearly see this is the level of the building. And it looks like this ground is rising as it goes to the back because there's stairs starting to go up here. Here's the front of that building again. Nice old buildings, aren't they? One doesn't look too far in the ground. This one, on the other hand, is right under the ground. Okay, I've got the steps going up here. Now they've they've obviously built a wall, I would say, on the inside, and you know it goes up above street level, and you can see all these windows clearly go down below the street level. So they must have been cleared out as well. And I mean, just look at you know this architecture. You know, we see this kind of I'm not sure what it's called, but you know this kind of facade everywhere. It looks like the Pillars might have been stylized a bit there. And again, these are, are mostly, these kind of buildings are, are pretty much all red brick buildings, but they, they render them and they cover them in different, um, you know, different looking facades and renders so that they all look different. But underneath, they're all the same. Here's that building again, and look at this. Look at these windows, like fully underground. And, and how much you reckon this building would weigh? It's even bigger than the last one. Again, you know, get me a builder that says that, that anyone would do that. I mean, yes, I know today they build car parks under buildings. I understand that. But these are not car parks. They're windows. These, this is a ground, this is another floor that's been built under the ground level. Or, as I believe, it was built on ground level and some event has happened and has buried it, what that event is, is still 
up for grabs. We have lots of theories. Obviously, the first one was the mud flood. You know, there's some kind of mud flood has happened, and we still see mud floods happening all around the world, and they bury buildings. But was there a worldwide one, and if so, what caused it? This is an old picture, pre-1900. This would be about 1880s again, and this again is Collins Street. And I mean, come on, again, look at this street pole with the light, these street lamps. We see them everywhere. The big towers here. Got big antennas all down here for some reason. Look at those. But just old world buildings, huge red brick, you know, completely unnecessary. And this is, look at the whole street is built out both sides. Mud, you know, not even a paved road, just a mud road, but they've built all this. And like I said, this would be, it's definitely pre 1900 because there's no cars or anything, it's just horses and carts. It looks 1880 ish. But just say it's 1900, and they've built all this in 70 years. I mean, and this is just one street. They built the rest of Melbourne too. So a little bit silly, and and just unnecessary. Like I said, if it's a new settlement, you would start off with small wood buildings, and you would work your way up. As and that's the story they tell us. That's what they say. The history line happened. That's what they say. Start with small things and they just got bigger and bigger and bigger. More intricate as they got more technology. Here's another shot. Um, now, I believe this is Collins Street. I, th I think it's number one, actually, Collins Street. Now, I'm not sure if this is Collins Street or th I think this going this way is. But you can see, look at this building, it's just not sitting flat. You can see the line along here. It's on a massive angle, two windows, underground, and now these windows you'll find they're always symmetrical, they're always underneath the ones on top, the same shape, the same width, everything, just going into the ground. Got two guys sitting here, like there's no one around, but look look how much building, and this is, this is another street, this isn't Collins Street, this is Collins Street, so this is all done in, you know, what, 50 years? The whole place was built out, and there's this no one there. Here's another one of those street lamps. Another old shot. I believe this is looking down Collins Street the other way uh, to the the shot that we saw with the really big Tartarian buildings. They're all up here. And these are the, the, uh, the towers that we could see in the distance. And this again, look, dirt roads, you know, it'd be around 1900, 1890 or something, and just completely built out. And you can see, like, the angles just on this wall here. <laughs> Looks like it's all been flooded. Here we get back to some pictures of carrots. They just, I mean, you know, look at these old, now what does it say? Oh, did that have a date on it? Does that say 1880? Can't really read it. But, you know, that would be about right if for a building date. And look at it, 50 years after they found the city of Melbourne, they're building this. And all of this, this is that other photo we saw before. I mean, just look at this. This is crazy. This is Melbourne, Australia, guys. It's not Europe. It's not Rome. It's not Greece. Look at, look, look at that thing. I mean, look at the pillars. I mean, how... Oh, we, we could not do this today, and they want us to believe that they were doing this, you know, with unpaved roads... Looks like the people have arrived in this photo. But um, I'm paid for those, you know, like, I mean, these people are in suits, you know, where are the workmen? These people are not workmen. And and where's all all the big carts that they can cart around, you know, rocks and bricks and glass and iron, long bits of wood and all this stuff they would need just for one building. But look at that street. That's just craziness. Big dome here. 
and it's just the whole way down. It can it just sort of blends it out into nothing into a nice vanilla sky, but you know you can kind of make stuff out going down there. And this looks like it's a more flat area, and it looks like obviously they've got the hill there, so that's where the sort of mud flooded buildings are. But just you know, ridiculous. Now this shot, and here we have another old shot. This isn't Collins Street, but this is Melbourne. And as you can see, it's all again built up, not as nice as uh, Collins Street, the architecture. You can see here we've got columns and the little portico, the triangle thing on top, like a little uh, what we're told is Roman looking buildings here. Uh, but as again, you can see in this one there's not really any people around, but it's just dirt roads. It's not the best contrast, but these are just um, the horse and carts. This is all they've got. It looks like a bit of rubbish around here too. This building actually looks like it's been burnt or something. And we've just got this, this is to hitch your horses up to or something, no doubt. But this is the kind of tech they had. There's nothing there. But they could build these buildings. And then they just paint a sign on it and say, yeah, see, we, we built it. You now it's like the architect, uh, <laughs> gosh. Um, it's like, um, you know, it's like the archaeologists and, and they find, you know, these old megalithic monuments and then to date them, they'll, they'll find a fire or something near, near them they, and they'll find, you know, they'll carbon date the burnt wood and go, oh, yes, well, it's only actually a thousand years old because obviously whoever started the fire built the whole thing, you know. It's, it's the same kind of concept that they're throwing at us. It's just we didn't have the tech to do anything, you know, but they get these buildings, they put their sign on it, and then they say, see, we built it. Uh, so this is on Collin Street, uh, around 1900. This is Collin Street up here, but you can see everything's just completely built out. Everything. Look at that. And it's just, they're all, you know, three, four-story brick buildings, apart from obviously we've got cathedrals and towers popping up here and here and here and more towers there. Uh, but just completely built out and all red brick. Now, where did all this red brick come from? Can you imagine how many bricks you would need just to build this one side of Collins Street? Then think about the whole rest of Melbourne. And this is what they're asking us to believe, but they can't show us you know, the, the, the brick uh, foundries, the brick pits and where they're making the bricks and everything, the kilns. You know, I've looked into this and the stuff that they have is just nowhere, you know, they just could not produce the amount of stuff that they would need to build this. So this city was found. It wasn't founded, it was found. Now look at this. I'm, I'm not sure what that is. It, you can see all these wires, so they, and there's another one here, so I think they are connected and it could just be an early um, a power pole, but I just haven't seen them looking like that before, especially going up on the top. And you can see how small the people are. Of course, we've got, whoops, right in there. Ah, it's giving away my good photo. <laughs> uh, look at the size of this lamp. See this guy standing in front of it? That's big. But, of course, I mean, just... Come on, look down that street. Look at the pillars here. And these are the buildings. They want us to believe these are the buildings that they just built 50 years after they just turned up. New country, no, nothing at all. No industry, no nothing. Everything they had, they had to bring by a boat. So you can imagine, you know, and, and this was, um, well, the Industrial Revolution had happened, but it was pre-electricity, pre, pre um, you know, steam engine, all that kind of stuff. And they built all this with convicts. Now this one, this is from Carrot as well. This, uh, what did he say next? I think he said it's next to the train station, the building next to the train station. <laughs> Look at this. Look at that. Of course they've gone in and bricked up. And you can clearly see that's a different kind of brick. But look at that. I mean, what? There's no way that was built like that. And that, how could you do it? What are people lying on their back and, and why? I mean, come on, that's a good one. Look at that. I think I've got a couple more. Here we go. And this is down, obviously, you can see down in the train tracks. It's just filled in. 
So this building, this is obviously the back of it, um, is like half underground. It's got another story or something. I'm not sure if this is an add-on or what, what's going on here, but just look at that. And it's interesting that it's near the train tracks too. I mean, was that, I don't know, part of an old train setup, you know, train rail system? This looks a bit like a tunnel. Don't know. Uh, now I think we've seen this picture. This guy sitting on his own. Spencer Street. Oh, here's another shot just of Melbourne again. You know, circa 1900. Look at all these buildings everywhere. Nice big towers popping up everywhere. And you can see it's built out right out everywhere. It's still built out completely. I've got one dude down here on his with his horse. Can't see any other people. Now see that might, that looks like it might be wooden. So this actually looks like they might have gone and built in between these big brick buildings of so they've built a couple of little wood or brick buildings and that's what you would expect to see stuff like this not like this not sure what's going on with that level there street I don't know but maybe it goes down and up again looks a bit weird but yeah just look at that completely built out Uh, this is Swanston Street, 1860, guys, 1860. Okay, so they turned up in a boat with a couple of people and some convicts in 1835. This is 25 years later. Look at this building. You might even look at this one. That looks like it's a stone building, I'm not sure. Could be a render of some kind, but... Brick, brick, double story. I mean, and you can see them going off into the background. Here as well. Here as well. And of course, just dirt roads. Because roads would be the last thing you would do, right? If you wanted to build a building, you wouldn't, you know, make a nice road so you could actually get the materials there. And look at, look at the carts they've got. To bring all the products and materials to build these kind of buildings. 1860 Melbourne. And look at that. And they, you know, they just had bricks to burn. They had so many left over, they just built a big brick wall. Why not? Why not indeed? All right, now that is the end of the photo show. So there you go, guys. What do you think? Melbourne just completely built out you know, 20, 25 years after it was discovered, settled, found. And obviously a lot of mud flood buildings and a lot of really nice old world architecture too. So the question is, you know, why are half the buildings sunk? Obviously we have our theories of that, the mud flood. And if, if history is true, if you believe the story, how did they do this? Like I've been saying, where did the materials come from? How were they transporting them on dirt roads? Where were the skilled labourers coming from? Where was just the population in general coming from? Because like I mentioned, you would need, you know, the, the to industries and, and you would need so many different industries. You would need the brick industry, the mortar and cement industry, the glass industry, the steel industry, you know, the wood industry, you know, and then you would need to be able to train all these people and you'd need to be making the tools that they use and just things like, you know, nails and screws and things. Like, you need a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff to build, you know, buildings like this. So the general narrative does not make sense. So I hope you like that one, guys. Uh, old World Melton with some mud flood buildings thrown in. So thanks to Kerrit again for all those photos. You can probably hear my cat is meowing at me in the background that's tippy <laughs> so thanks for joining me guys 
Hope you enjoyed that one, and I shall catch you on the next upload. Bye for now.